It's going to just give that to his son, two, about three acres. Three, He's going to build a house four. there. So. All set? Yeah. Yep. Okay. I keep that guy here, I feel. <laughs> 703, and I'll call to order meeting of the Middlebury Development Review Board for uh, April 10th, 2017. First thing, I'll go over the agenda, and we have one item on the agenda tonight, which is an application by G-Stone Motors for a conditional use review of a proposal to construct an addition to the current facility. This property is located at 36 Boardman Street in the PhD District. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, aren't you supposed to ask for public communications first? There probably aren't any. Am I? Well, yes, that's I am. What the agenda is. Well, yes. Okay. <coughs> Still on vacation. Go to you, gentlemen. I go to them. Yeah, usually I do. I will. Um, okay. Are there any public communications on any item not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none. I'll go back to my uh, uh, list here. If, if anybody is an interested person, they would have to sign in tonight. Um, okay, approval of minutes of 2 2017 uh, Since we don't have those, we're going to postpone that until the next meeting. First item on the business agenda, again, is an application by G-Stone Motors, a conditional use review of the proposal to construct an additional addition to the current facility. This property is located at 36 Boardman Street in the protected highway district. Um, first, I'll administer the oath. <coughs> Uh, the DRB oath for applicants and interested persons. I affirm that the evidence and information I am giving in this proceeding is true and accurate to the best of my knowledge and belief. Okay, would you like to come forward and present? Mr. Chairman, yes. I'm going to recuse myself. Okay, thank you. I, I would like to disclose that I went down and I walked around with Todd Stone and mentioned his application because I had. John, are you concerned? He answered my concerns. Okay. Kevin. Okay. Good evening. Are you for us to go? Yep, I am now. My name's Tanner Romano from Naylor and Breen Builders. I'm here with Todd Stone, and we're uh, presenting a project for an addition expansion to their existing facility on the south end of the uh, current maintenance shop, or mechanic shop, I should say. Um, as well as a parking lot expansion is actually one of the documents that I should have included in the original packet I sent to you all. Uh, so I'll hand this out real quick. Thank you. Is that what started there? That you do? Uh, that's where the addition is. So the gray shaded area on the uh, Route 7 side of the page, bottom side of the page, was actually permitted back in 1997 with their um, expansion at that time, um, but the parking lot was never expanded. So that expansion is what we're asking for as part of this permit as well as the addition. Um, one okay. question I just wanted to ask before I get to go ahead. Are those all ash trees in the front? I believe they are. So, yeah. Where are we at with the removal of the ash trees because of the ash board in Middle Grass? I'm sure the infrastructure committee received a more recent report than I did on that, but uh, where are we at? The, the ash borer isn't in the state of Vermont yet, but it's anticipated to be. And when it is, it's just going to decimate all the ash trees. So we're starting to budget for replacement of ash trees in the public right of way. But ash trees that are on private property are the responsibility of the owners. And we don't really have a way of assisting owners with that at this time. I think you and I voted on that. Though. 
I yeah, think well, you right, can. and, and, and um, I guess where I'm going with this is that <laughs> if you're going to have a parking lot expansion and we know eventually that these trees are probably going to die, why aren't we thinking about replanting trees if, if, if that's what we should be doing? I mean, if I look at, and I did look at that, and I don't, well, we'll let the applicant carry on from there. I just think that Where I was headed with this document is if you look at this versus the existing and proposed conditions that I sent you in the, in the packet, you'll see that the trees were actually planted closer to the parking lot. So they're actually on the red line, which is in this diagram that I just gave you. Right. So if we're successful in getting a permit to expand the parking lot, those trees would have to be removed and replanted. Um, that being said, the setback is 150 feet, Jen, from mm -hmm. the center line. And this current plan, or excuse me, the previous plan from 1997 only gets you 132 feet. So we, I don't believe we can expand as much as the original was, was showing or proposing. So that's what we're, part of what we're here for tonight is to try and determine to what extent, and if it's the 150 feet, I believe that's what Todd would like to do, the maximum that he can. Um, that'll still inevitably get into the root base of those <coughs> trees, so we would propose to take them down and, and replace. Replant. And replace them. Yes. Yeah. With yes. ash? <laughs> Probably not with ash, no. That's what they told us to be for. these days. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Elm? Yeah, you don't have anything about landscaping that in your application. So we do is not. that something you're going to undertake to do? Um, I don't want to speak for you, Todd, but I believe we're amenable to, if yeah. the town has a recommendation, I don't think there's a hard preference on the apple G stones in terms of what the trees are themselves, but I think we'd propose to put back the same trees that were originally permitted in terms of orientation, mm -hmm. just a different species. Yeah. So Can if the town has a strong opinion in terms of what they're moving towards, that I think that'd be the logical yeah, answer. Okay. Andrew, could you just go over again? The, the request is for um, the parking, the new parking area, which is in the red. That's correct. And then, then in addition to the, this here. Oh, Precisely. I think I'm wrong, and I could see it best, and the camera could see it best if, if Jen held it. Like that. I get, I get a roll here. This is fun. Yeah. Oh, from my area? Yeah. The area where the addition is, mm -hmm. is that existing parking now or is it just a. Uh, yes, it's existing parking now. Or drive lane and parking. Drive lane. It, mostly, it comprises mostly both. Mostly drive lane, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. okay. So, and the amount of, the, the actual number of parking places that you lose because of the building, do we know what that number is? I don't exactly. I would, yeah. I don't, not many. Okay, no. Oh. Well, we okay. wanted to move it forward so we could have driving, you know, drive around right. the back. Okay, and, and then this area that's darkened up here. That, that was permitted and constructed okay. as part yes. of the 97. I'm not, and Todd and I spoke about this earlier, we're, we're actually not sure why the expansion on the front parking lot did not get constructed. Okay. That's my dad's, I don't, I don't know. But obviously that permit's long, long <coughs> since expired, so we're, we're starting fresh here. Okay. I just brought that diagram in because in email correspondence with Victor, it was clear that it was <coughs> unclear in the diagram I sent originally. <coughs> forward. And so the, the, the plan is to, uh, Remove, bring the parking out closer, but still be behind the uh, setback requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. Remove the existing ash trees, and then do landscaping in front of that. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. What's hard to tell from the pictures and the plans is there's quite a bit of grade change in the area mm -hmm. where the addition's getting built, so the grade's going to have to pitch back into where they're currently using uh, parking area now so that's why it's, it's somewhat hard to determine exactly how many spots they're going to lose and that's that's yeah. part of the reason for expanding and, and the drainage ditch that are, are that runs in front of the parking lot now will have to be moved further exactly further uh, Correct. west but that current ditch what water does that pick up now 
not much. Sur <laughs> surface water, I assume. That well, right, but the way it is, if, if I stopped and looked at it, it doesn't look like it actually picks up any water from the parking lot. Yeah, I walked out there to field verify some of these measurements, and I agree, it's it's pretty dry, and this is a pretty wet time of year. So, yeah. I ever see any water going down through there? Ever. I know further down it gets yeah, pretty I, wet. Yeah. Right, and then, yeah, I can understand that. But further down on what you mean, north? Uh, yeah, further north down seven, closer to Boardman Street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, um, there was a concern, I guess, by the fire department about um, the ability to move trucks around the building. Where where will that route now be? Will that again, I don't think that a final parking layout in terms of how they're going to inventory their cars has been defined, but. You don't want to speak for Utah, but I think they're willing to say in the permit that they'll leave a drive lane open yeah. somewhere for some flow point. around and, the building. And we, when we move the cars forward, we can, you know, where the employee parking lot is in the back, that's mm -hmm. in the way back part. You know, we can open that up more. We'll have your area. We want to be able to drive. We're going to be able to drive through there also yeah. because it's going to be a little limited when we put the building. We're not going to be able to drive through <coughs> anymore right there. Uh, where, uh, where does this trucks unload? When they bring inventory to you on the back road. on Wilson Road, yep. okay. that's part of the reason. Um, one of the questions that was asked earlier um, for Victor was the reason for the little bump out on the addition, and that's to give them internal access to their cold storage space so they get the parts uh, to funnel into the building without having to go outside. So right now, the new inventory that comes in is unloaded on Wilson Road, or does the truck go into your truck? They pull sometimes into our property, sometimes in the back street, but most of, most of the time it's on the back street that they, they uh, unload there. But sometimes they pull right straight in and load right, uh, right in front of the dealership. Right, right in front, close to the south. Uh, right. Uh, from Here's the new addition we did last year. Yeah, they pull it right from this way. So off from Boardman Street. Yeah. Okay. Onto the north end of the building. Victor, if you want me to touch on them, I can. Sure. Um, same as the last edition, we will work with Engineering Services of Vermont to, once we uncover and determine the under slab piping, uh, ensure that the oil grit separator is sized properly. We believe the one that we installed in the last edition is large enough to cover the new expansion, but we'll have that verified and provide follow up to the town just like we did in the last expansion, uh, sign off and submittals that document that. And the only other question I believe that was asked was in terms of security lighting, Todd, how you plan to leave the lights on or not on the back side of the building? Yeah, we leave them on. So there's no change in terms of what's left on versus not. Will there, will there be any new outdoor lighting? There will. Oh, yeah. For each of the man doors, there'll be new downlit LEDs. Okay. And I gave you a cut sheet on those. Um, there's existing fixtures on the gable end of the building now that'll get moved accordingly. So, in theory, no change other than they're 30 feet further to the south. How much additional lighting is there going to be? Uh, oh, there's two uh, new fixtures over each man door on each eave. Okay. That would be it. So, so no new lighting for the uh, car display parking? We just no. moved the lights that are on the building right now onto the okay. addition of the building. No, but I'm in I'm oh. the, the new parking area. No, no. Light. no. Okay. Um, well, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say no. It, depending on how, if we add another light onto the other side of it, I don't know how. I 
can't there's picture there's existing where the, pole lights yes, there but the, depending the, on how that parking right, lot but if gets we added sized. another light to the <clears> opposite <throat> side of it there's i think there's three poles up there i don't know how much lighting it's gonna how much lighting we're gonna lose with the vehicles parked forward you know if the lighting isn't lit i would like to light them This is three poles there, I believe, right? Yep. Yeah, but those those three poles will those will be moved in any way. No, I'd leave them. You'd leave them. Yeah. Okay. So they'll be into the into the parked area. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to tear it all up because they're wired on the ground. And everything. Yep. Oh. Okay. So we can put a light on the back of it, back of the pole. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Those are pretty tall. I don't know if you would need to. But. Any other questions from the board at this time? Gary? Uh, is the design advisory committee seeing this yet? Or? No. No. Okay. It was pretty easy to illustrate this one just because it's another day. So I did give you a an actual Google Earth image and crop the building so you can see what's in that packet. I don't know yeah, if it's helpful I, or not, but you know, they, they yeah. always weigh in on it's all the same color scheme, same roof lines. So maybe they won't. So it doesn't, you know, from what I'm looking at with the overhead view, it doesn't look like by adding the building on, if you kind of, if I draw in on the Google Earth map not losing a whole lot of parking, maybe two or three spaces, but the bump out for the parking lot is to be able to create more of a traveled lane around the around the building. Correct. Yeah. And the other piece that's to be determined, John, is where they're going to put their drive lane access, because right now they basically park so that that back lot is sectioned off. Okay. So they're going to lose some vehicles there, too. So. Okay. The easiest approach seemed to go back to this original design, which worked for flow and yep and everything. And right, we assumed since this was somewhat reviewed, it would be the easiest to pass through. Understanding that now the setback's about 18 feet shorter, so it wouldn't be able to be the full expansion. So let me ask uh, the applicant if I if I can, do you have? The dimension you need, if it's one fifth, if the one fifty dimension is the correct one, do you have the dimension that you need to have a usable drive lane and parking, a row of parking? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. One fifty is not the construction. <coughs> I mean, I, I thought yeah. I don't want to put words in your mouth, no, but I no, believe the fine. preference yeah. would be to get as much room as he could for inventory. Right. Mm -hmm. um, understanding that the one fifty is the setback. That's what we're. What we're working with wit with and that allows us the drive lane that we need. So it's it's difficult because it's not dimensioned right to the <clears throat> back line of the double loaded uh, parking piece, but at with a one seventy two one seventy two foot nine would mean that you have twenty uh, twenty two feet to give. Correct. Plus what looks like another four or five feet. Which is essentially a parking stall, so it gets us that drive line. So a stall would be eighteen, nineteen. Exactly. And you would I mean, a two a two way lane would typically be twenty two, twenty four. So you're you're close, but you you have a tight lane basically. The bumpers might exceed over the front of the parking lot a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's what I that's what I wanted to get at. Yeah, that, it's that one fifty is the governing number. It's not it's not a. Well, that's a good question to ask. I guess we should make sure we're on the same. But. I think I think that nod has already been received. But it's one fifty. It's either or, isn't it? One fifty from the center. Or 75 from the right away. Right, or the greatest dimension, which would be the 150, 150. for us. Okay. So you're not asking for any any sort of uh, waiver to the rules. He's just asking for what the setback requires. No. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, staff, any questions or comments or concerns at this point? No. Okay, I'll open it up to the public. Um, are there any questions or comments about this application? Travis, this is your big chance. <laughs> <laughs> no questions or concerns about my part. Don't sink us, little brother. <laughs> Hearing none, um, any other from the board members? 
Um, <clears throat> let's see. I, I just had one question. Is that Go ahead. If you took a straight edge from the two vehicles that are in the display and you drew a straight edge all the way to Willow Drive, those trees are on whose property? Looks like they're on. They're on. What is the distance? Well, I get this hard to say. See it's 108 saying? feet from the center line to the edge of their existing parking in front of the display area. Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Okay. So it shows. And I can't read that. What is it? 108 feet. Okay. All right. So if you drew, if you drew a straight edge all the way from there to Willow Drive. You're asking whose tr whose property are the ash trees on? Yeah. Um, their property. Yeah, they're it's still their property. It's, they're this, your property. This little color photo on the front of the staff memo shows the right of way, very thin black line. Okay. Were you asking about property or whether it's well? No, I'm just setback. trying to I'm just trying to figure out the setback and what's going to happen when you start digging near those trees. You know the root of those trees. You know, and you heard them say that. I mean, the, the scary people we heard people here saying yeah, that the world's going to come to end and all ash trees were going to die here a month ago. So, <laughs> just. Those are well on private property. They're good. Yeah. They're a good seventy-five feet from the edge of the right of way. Right. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe the borer won't come to Vermont. Hmm. Maybe the ash borer won't. Come. Maybe the ash borer won't come. I ain't yet. Any other questions? I don't see any reason why we can't approve the application. Okay, uh, before you make the motion, uh, the plan is you're going to do a detailed final plan? Yes. That will include the parking and uh, proposed landscaping and uh, um, truck lanes on the final plan? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And yeah, I mean, we get actual structural plans and the whole nine yards and I'm happy to provide those all to the town if you'd like. I, I, the question you were talking about earlier about the oil separator and then also Dan had made some comment about the size of the stone in the ditch. Yeah, that's true. Did he not? That, I think I read that. He did make a cat. I forgot to tell you that. He made a casual comment that maybe if you're replacing those dit ditches, he thought if you used a larger kind of stone, it wouldn't wash out and require so much maintenance on your part. But yeah, blue stone. Well, blue stone, I think he said. Yeah. Yeah. You know the the ditch in front of that. You know the, the ravine and stuff. Right. We've had a pond out in front of our place for now going on like it's been going on for six, seven years. We even have cattails growing up, and they can't figure out where it's coming from. But it gets really wet down there. And poor Deborah Longmore, lady, she gets stuck. I don't know how many times a year down there. But it's a. And I talked to. Um, different people about it they're supposed to come check it out and nothing's happened and it gets really wet there I mean really wet there so you think so, there's a water leak somewhere uh, they say no I don't know where it's coming from but it's really really wet yeah but it, I mean it bubbles right out of the ground this is the root seven side excuse me the root seven side yeah probably comes off that ridge across the road well, that's what they said but then they I, I don't know I don't know what's going on but it is, there's a lot of water there is there a culvert under the, are there any culverts under Route 7 right there? The old drawings do show that, that there's old culverts that converge to a catch basin down on the corner of Boardman and Route 7. They've been down there and they've dug it up, they, I think they've dug it up three times. Oh, I'm sure. And it's still, it's, it's a lot of water. <clears throat> are we ready for a motion? <clears throat> I'm always a motion. Okay. I move that the Millbury Development Review Board have reviewed the applicant submitted and now referred to do a consideration of testimony at the public hearing April 10th. Approve this conditional use request for an addition to G Stone Morris facility 
located at 36 Boardman Road in the protected highway zone district, zoning district. There's been a motion. Is there a second to the motion? A second. A second. Is there further discussion on the motion? So I guess my question is getting back to the the oil. Is that something you're gonna you're gonna deal with that administratively? Yeah. 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 So we don't need to put that in any form of. Okay. You could always create a condition, I suppose, that that asks them to check back with me. Okay. The last project we did, Jen gave me a nice little list of three or four items she wanted to follow up on, and I just I followed okay. up with her at the closeout of the project to work pretty smooth. But okay. happy to do whichever you prefer. I I I am supportive of the of the motion, uh, but I, I I feel like we we I think the replacement of the the landscaping with equivalent landscaping is is in, is important. Um, I think it should be part of it, but it doesn't need to be a condition if it's. Well, they're not going to be as big as these trees are now. Uh, I'm, I'm aware of the, <laughs> the, the time and space qualities right. of the landscape. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm also concerned about the scare with the ice core, too. Well, are we comfortable leaving that decision once they make a proposal to have it, I, I, have, have it Jen review it? I think I am. I am. What, I, what I'd like to point out is I think that that should be on the submittal, the, you know, when we, when we show the actual line of the, in the revised site plan. Yeah, show where the trees are going. So how about a condition that asks for uh, replacement of trees in kind? Maybe Sorry. maybe even salt tolerant species, which you would probably do anyway. I don't think oaks last long with salt around them, but something like that. Has the town selected something that they're going to go with in the replacement effort? <laughs> yeah. Actually. It's probably going to be a little of everything. <laughs> really? <laughs> so they planted sumac in front of our office, so wow. we, we won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, They're real I, pretty in the fall, you I, know. They are, I don't feel but like we have a role. I don't think I don't even feel like it is an appropriate role in this instance to right. tell people what species to get yeah, seventy-five right, right. feet off of a. But, but I do think it is as a spatial issue. It is important yes. to the, the landscape does a job there for the public and for Mr. Stone. Yes, I, don't agree. I agree. I shouldn't stay. Sounds like willow trees might be in order. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think willow They drink a lot. Wow. We're replacing with 30 problem. meter windmills now. Talking <laughs> <laughs> about mess. There would probably be a bigger crowd here tonight if we're replacing with windmills. Mm. Yeah. Um, if nothing else, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? None. So who's voting? Everybody's voting at, at this table. So I'm replacing Scott. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks to the applicant for the complete submittal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, which one is yours? Oh, this one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that's right. You handed it to me. Everybody followed. Just took every willow tree right here. Off of their path. So the final. Yeah. Uh, Strip the golf course of willow trees. It used to be some milk of willow trees. 200 of them. Just now? 200 trees in. Willow trees, twice the size of this table. Gone. And willows and. <laughs> um, next item on the agenda other business. Yeah. Thanks. We're at other business. Is there anything anybody I wants can think to of? Just uh, we do have April twenty fourth meeting. I sent you guys out that um, email. So two weeks. I know Scott you said you couldn't kill him, but FYI, we have two things for next two weeks. What do you have? Is one of them the Rouse application? Yes. 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 Yeah, there was. What is it? Farmers Market. Farmers Market. Really? Yeah. yeah. Market. Well, well, is, is that a new application from Rouse? Yes. What happened to the old one? State of Vermont. Old one happened to old one? Oh, um, he just did a preliminary last time. Right. So now he's coming back with a, a final, hopefully. Oh, okay. Was it Foster Motor or Foster Brothers that, that, front that came in and actually asked? Proposed right. Yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That tripped that subdivision. So that, I guess it tripped, tripped an act, act 250. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what happened to that. 
We don't want to okay. discuss it too much outside the yeah. hearing. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else the board wants to talk about? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, discussion on the motion. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? I don't see how you get paid tonight.